the question is about the state of the no of knowledge at the time of of uh, this publication. The year roughly is 1990. There had been sort of uh, in existence a number of uh, authors who had written about the subject of internment. Um, the types of literature that was being produced was of three kinds or three varieties. The first, of course, was kind of the academic uh, literature that was being produced, and it was for the specialist uh, and for very sort of specific audiences, individuals who uh, were interested in very sort of the, uh, the nuts and bolts of internment, um, but on a very detailed, on a, uh, in a detailed way, if you will. And there are uh, some authors that are noteworthy in this regard, Desmond Morton, um, James Carruthers, uh, Peter Milnitsky, people who are writing on sort of legal as well as historical political aspects of, of internment. The second sort of uh, literature that was available tended to be uh, sort of surveys, uh, and this necessarily placed internment in the context of sort of broad developments within Canadian history. So this literature uh, focused on things like immigration, um, Canada at war, and so on and so forth, that necessarily touched on internment. And some of the noteworthy authors of this time, of course, John Hurt Thompson, Donald Avery, um, Howard Palmer, uh, writing about nativism in Alberta at the, at, the, at the time of the war and the like. And then the third, there's a third type of literature. And the third uh, literature had to do with redress. Uh, redress that uh, uh, tried to popularize the issue, but also make the case that uh, an injustice had occurred and an apology uh, was warranted, if you will. <clears throat> that being said, there wasn't really a kind of um, book-length study or a monograph written on internment. And it really spoke to the fact that, you know, the evidence uh, was not available. The archival ev evidence was scarce and, uh, and the job itself was fairly daunting. And when Peter and I embarked on this, it was uh, clear to us that, that uh, that was a her Herculean task. And I think rather than uh, sort of biting off more than we could chew, we asked ourselves, you know, what could we do to advance this sort of the subject matter? And we had stumbled across this, um, this uh, document, uh, which was a diary that was held or that was written during the period of, uh, of the Castle Mountain internment camp, Banff, Banff Castle Mountain internment camp, when it was in existence. And it was a diary that sort of gave a blow day by day uh, account of um, what had occurred there. But in it, there were, there were nuggets of information revealing about uh, what had occurred, uh, uh, the experience that they had to endure, and so on and so forth. And so it really spoke to us. And it spoke to us because it, re it wasn't about sort of historians speaking after the fact, uh, but rather this was a document that was reaching from the past and and revealing itself uh, to us about what had occurred. So what we have are voices uh, from that distant past telling us about something uh, uh, that had happened at that moment in time. And so we uh, saw this as an opportunity, but also as, um, as a, 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 a real contribution, uh, allowing voices uh, that had not yet been heard to speak for themselves uh, from that distant past. And so we're making uh, I think a real a general contribution to the state of knowledge about internment. Uh, what are the central themes um, that emerge out of this book? I think um, when we we um, when we think about sort of what ha what had uh, when we read the diary uh, uh, the diary itself, we're confronted with the question about what had happened. In and of itself, the sort of the account reveals what had happened. Um, but in asking that question, I think a whole series of other questions begin to emerge. And they actually uh, frame or form the content, uh, the thematic content of the book. Not least of which is, if this did happen to them, and we uh, would make the, the case that it seemed to be something that was untoward and perhaps even unjust, then a series of other questions arises, arise. And that is, uh, what is the role and relationship uh, between a government and its people? Uh, what, uh, what rights do individuals who come to this land have um, 
especially during moments of crisis, uh, when they may very well be find themselves vulnerable and under threat, if you will. If, if, if governing is about uh, just rule and good governance, then what role and responsibilities do governments have during moments of crisis? These are the kinds of questions that start with the issue that we find in the, the diary, what happened? Um, and it frames in many ways the broader themes that we often, we should sort of uh, consult, consider uh, in terms of uh, as we embark on uh, further reflection on a, and in fact on a, a journey of discovery about this moment in time. Peter Milnitsky and I decided to embark on this project largely because we were very much moved by what we had read. We saw this as a as a, a testimonial, a testimonial about something that had occurred at that distant time, but more importantly, at a time when individuals were prevented from speaking for themselves. These were individuals who were hauled away and put you know, in an internment camp on the frontier. And in that silence, we heard hide nor hair of what had happened to them. And yet what we see is this, this document that comes from this distant past and suddenly reveals itself, this, this, this happened. And, um, and in this regard, it, we were sort of moved by the idea that we had an opportunity for these people to tell us something about what had happened through this, this diary, if you will. And so when we embarked on this project, it was with the view of giving them that opportunity, uh, an opportunity that had been denied them. I think a secondary aspect of this, which is we wanted this document to be um, uh, viewed as a testimonial. Uh, about what had occurred. In this regard, it serves as a kind of monument, a monument not uh, as we often uh, would th think of uh, in terms of physical space, commemorating an event by erecting a cairn and so on and so forth, but sort of a, uh, a literary monument, uh, a testimonial about something that had occurred. And so every, what we were doing was inviting the reader in reading uh, of, of this document, in effect, uh, paying homage uh, to um, to what had happened, if you will, uh, memorializing uh, the occurrence, and in in some respect, also uh, asking individuals um, to um, to memorialize the event through participating in reading about the event. Uh, certainly, uh, one of the largest difficulties that we encountered was that there was no template. Um, you know, we had sort of these signposts, um, these literature was already there, but nothing that could sort of tell us something about what had occurred uh, in uh, internment as a whole. And so it was very difficult to situate, very difficult to situate uh, the Banff Castle Mountain experience within a larger sort of narrative about internment. So we were struggling and, uh, and yet at the same time, we felt um, and we believed that um, the diary could speak for itself. It was, however, um, incumbent on others to fill in the blank. And so for us, um, the challenge was not just simply about, uh, about writing about this, but it, the challenge was also about how to inspire others to to think uh, how they might also contribute to a larger project, which is to make, uh, make more uh, uh, available sort of, uh, the, the, sort of the history of this period, but also uh, to raise awareness about this, uh, about, about the experience itself. When we think about this book as a kind of monument, uh, uh, as a testimonial, um, certainly one of the the sort of um, personal ambitions that we had were as in effect to have indi in invite individuals to think critically about uh, the experience. <clears throat> and in this regard, I think um, we um, had hoped to inspire individuals to contribute to the discussion and the dialogue about the experience. And in this regard, the last two decades, certainly after three three decades actually, some 30 years since this uh, first appeared, we see sort of 
um, the arts uh, filling in the blanks, uh, the important contributions of people who were um, using their particular talents to give expression uh, and about how they understood the experience. There have been murals that have been painted. There have been music that's been composed. Uh, there are dramas that have been written, uh, sonnets uh, that have been uh, that have been uh, 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 written as well, uh, and of course, um, uh, sort of uh, the use of creative nonfiction as a way to uh, to uh, to explore, uh, you know, uh, and make more widely known uh, the those distant uh, events. These three decades uh, since we published this book uh, has been um, remarkable. Uh, where we were and where we are today is uh, worlds apart. And so in some respects, I think we, uh, inspiring other people to use their particular talents, I think we've, uh, we've been fairly successful. But that's also a testament to the community and its, and its willingness and artists and their willingness to, um, to, to contribute, largely because the experience itself uh, warrants it. If I, if I had to sort of uh, think about the last three decades where we started off having published this particular book and where we are today, it's been a journey of discovery. I think a journey of discovery for myself and those that I've, uh, I've been working with, um, but I think for others who've uh, been invited into, into this project of trying to understand uh, what this thing called interment has been all about, if you will. And so um, it's been three, uh, three, uh, three decades of work, consistent work, uh, where we've been and where we are today. Uh, as I've indicated, it's uh, sort of uh, worlds apart. Uh, it's now part of the national discussion about, uh, about Canada's past uh, and ultimately um, its future. This isn't just about something that occurred, but in many ways it also has implications for how we as a, a country move forward. Uh, understanding your past is a way actually to move forward as a nation.